my document. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously, as overachievers, high achieving, foot forward women, many of you, ah, okay, us, <laughs> we're really so stuck in self-sabotage, constantly beating ourselves up and putting ourselves down. Oh my gosh, raise your hand. I know I'm one of them. I know our guest today is, is an overcomer of self-sabotage. Also, many of us don't think that we really do it to ourselves because we don't say it out loud. Some of you totally beat yourself down and are really, probably really almost addicted to this kind of unhealthy behavior and you probably don't even know it. And most of you believe that it's, po it's not possible to live anything other than a mediocre life. I know, I might be hitting your gut just a little bit. My guest today is a thought leader in female empowerment and entrepreneurship and a best-selling author. She's a coach with Forbes and a premier, premier success coach with eWomen Network. Whoa. She's a licensed counselor and transformational life strategist coach and has been for more than two decades. She has counseled thousands and thousands of people living unfulfilled, mediocre lives, feeling weighted down and overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, raise your hand if you've ever felt weighted down and overwhelmed right? Right. She has combined her counseling background with energy psychology and has applied the principles of law, the law of attraction and to shift individuals mindsets and transform their lives, resulting in astonishing, magical transformations. It won't take you long. You guys, seriously, our women on this show are outstanding and brilliant. And she does not fall short of the line. I can't wait for you to meet her. Hang around. We've got a great show that you are live with us on the Aaron Strayer Show. This is where we talk about all kinds of things that are hot topics and pain points like self-sabotage. We promote, cultivate, and expand amazing female entrepreneurs that are out there in the world doing things just a little bit differently. Oh, I can't wait for you to meet our our guest our guest today. I'm getting excited because I love her. I'm Erin Strayer and I am the host today and your recovering corporates and entrepreneurs hire me to get them business beyond the basics because most are indecisive. They're held hostage by their own fear and quite honestly, they have settled for average, which is one of the things that we're talking about today on the show. So I help them keep ta task um, by setting obtainable goals, plugging gaping holes in their business and in their personal lives and help take their dreams to reality. And bottom line, I provide executive level accountability sessions so that you and your business gets the attention to detail. It deserves and you start making money in your business and you want to meet Terry Carjala. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you. Hi friend, how are you? Fantastic. How I know, you? hey, happy Thursday. It's yes. great. Happy Thursday. I know, like, I am so excited. Like, it is just like, things are falling into place. It is, it's a dynamite day. I'm it's excited. Dyna dynamite day with dynamite women that are out there. So you are a, like, self-proclaimed adrenaline junkie. I am. <laughs> I mean, really? Like, you know, here's, here's the thing, actually, how this came about, because I was not, I was not at all. How this came about is when I was doing, um, all of this because i used to live in fear mode the majority of my life i would say the majority of my life and i when i started learning and researching and just doing my own personal development i came across some information around um that we are born with only two fears two and i started wanting to debunk this and so i was like well if we're only you know um born with two fears then what's my deal and so the, the two fears for your listeners is one is the fear of loud noises. They've done research with this. And then the, um, the sensation of falling. And so they've done different research um, studies over the years to determine that um, innately. But so what I, what I started doing is like, why am I living in so much fear? So then anything and everything that like, seemed fearful, I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it. So I just kept saying yes to all these adventures. And I just, um, there's a part of me that just loves that adrenaline rush that you get. You're like, Pah! And it just, I don't know what it is, but I, it's its yummy and it's terrifying. And I want to pee my pants every time. And <laughs> right? I do. And um, it's, it's fantastic. But what I've learned over the years of just saying yes to those things that are really terrifying 
it, then I tell myself, you know, I did that. And that didn't, that didn't, um, you know, I, I was able to do that. And so if I can do that, I can do this. If I can do that, I can do this. And so I just keep doing it over and over just to keep reinforcing my brain that I was like, if I can do that, I can do this. So yes. That's, you know, it's, it's funny because, um, so many things, like I just went on like one of the biggest water slides of my life, like yesterday and same kind of thing. Like, I'm like, ah, scream it all the way down. And then it's like, okay, let's do that again. <laughs> like I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Give me a little bit. Give me, give me a second to breathe. <laughs> and so when, and it, and when we tighten the brain and so mm -hmm. when the brain goes, gosh, that was okay. You did it. You survived let's do it again. The brain will like, yeah, let's do it. And so then your brain hops in there and starts finding all the evidence that you're, that you were fine. And you can apply this to anything in your, in your life or in your business. The more we get out of that comfort zone, the more we can expand it. And the more we give our brain evidence that it's okay. So, so for you. thanks. For you. Thanks. High five. Um, <laughs> so I, I really want to go back to the two, two fears because that, ties in so much with getting back on track, staying on track, self-sabotaging, right? Like pulling your feet out from underneath yeah. of you. And seriously, like the fear of falling was real yesterday. Like super real. <laughs> yeah. And and I could I could have turned around and walked right back down the stairs that I climbed up. I could have, yeah. right? I, I could have just gone and sat in the lazy river all day, which I did that too. But right, like um, why do we, why do we talk ourselves out? of it what is that what 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 takes us there what takes us to that place of i can't do that uh why am i really doing it yeah and you I, know. I, honestly, I feel like it's that those those stories right where wherever we got those stories and those belief systems that have been fostered over time you know as soon as we start to do anything that seems you know outside of our comfort zone i mean let's be honest like our brain wants to keep us safe and mm -hmm. protected and sure. so our ego is going to hop in there anytime when there seems to be, a, it appears to be a threat. And, you know, we've talked about, you know, you know, back in the, the, the um, you know, back in the day when, you know, cavemen ruled the, the, the planet. Um, and there were serious things that were, you know, terrifying, you know, when we were out there and, and there's a cyber toothed tiger, there was part of our brain that goes, wow, this is something that we need to, you know, fear and run to safety, right? What has happened though over time is that we now, you know, get triggered in everyday conversations, situations. And so that fight, flight, or freeze response, that internal arousal state is being triggered all the time um, in our in our brains. And so part of that is just a natural response to what we see as a perceived threat. Sure. Um, but over time it's become, it's constant. You know, our, our level of stress is so much higher than it used to be. And so um, so when we have things that are presenting any type of threat, um, our brain goes right there. And then what happens is, is our, our stories and all of the evidence and all of the, you know, um, previous belief systems, we're like, oh, of course. You know, taking a leap outside my business or outside my life is going to be terrifying. And so we can either buy that story, right, that is an option, or that we can also buy the option but this is something that's exciting for us too, because the cool thing about fear is physiologically, from a physiological standpoint, fear and excitement show up physiologically the same in our bodies. We're the ones who give it definition and meaning. And so, mm. and a lot of, I just got off a phone call like minutes before I hopped on here and the guy goes, I am absolutely terrified, but I am super excited at the same time. I'm like, absolutely, right? And so, you know, we can now say, okay, you know, define what that looks like for each of us. And, um, you know, we can start to, you know, give meaning to the excitement part because it is exciting to get outside and do something new that we've never known. Um, but yeah, so I feel like the brain is hopping in there and it's saying, whoa, 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 you need to take, you know, take your time and, and be safe and I want to protect you. Um, but we get to, we get to choose to override that or not. Yeah. And yeah. So often we don't override it um, because it, let's be honest, the comfort, I mean, the comfort zone is not called, you know, you know, it's comfort called, zone for any re no reason at all. Right. Like it's, it, it is discomforting to leave that space. Right. Because that's what's what we know, like, and you know, that, that feels safe to us. And so anything, any little tiny 
you know, movement outside of that, um, you know, brings us a little bit of a threat to us. So. Yeah. And it gets scary. Right. And that's when it's like, mm, I don't know. That's not for me. That's for everybody else. That's not for me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have the training. Right. Like we start talking ourselves out of everything. Right. Like let's just spin this on the business part. Right. Like we were talking water slides and adrenaline because you've done everything under the sun. Adrenaline junkie. I <laughs> I'll sign up for anything. And when I travel and speak, I actually will go and Google like what are the adventures in that area. And I try to take that in when I'm when I'm traveling. To when the you're city. there. That's beautiful. I love that. So like as an entrepreneur, because not only do you own an extremely successful, um, what do we want to call that, that you own? It, it is a brick and mortar. It is a go-to place. It is a brick and mortar business. Yeah. It is a, it is a extremely successful brick and mortar um, go-to visit place. Um, but you're also an entrepreneur and, and um, so you basically have two jobs two full-time jobs that you, you know, do. You know, the counseling practice as of about nine months ago um, is running itself. So yeah. now I truly feel like I'm a business owner. So that is, I've gotten all the systems in place, all the people in the place. And so that business is actually running itself. Which um, is beautiful. So I spend about, um, I, I checked this about last or last month and I checked it and I spent about five minutes in on that business. And that's really just kind of checking in to make sure things are going copacetic. So yeah, so now I've, um, so I, now I focus solely on the talking with Terry. And so now I'm working with women entrepreneurs, um, really helping them clear up their head trash so head that trash. they can level up in their business and in life. Right. But, um, really I love focusing on, you know, those women entrepreneurs, um, because, you know, we, all of us, I find that we get to a certain level and then we just kind of level out there. And then that's where mm -hmm. I think mediocrity settles in. And we don't necessarily push beyond that. And I love working with what I call um, creative visionary leaders, which are the people that are um, that are just they just know they have this internal knowing that they're meant to do bigger and better things and to have a massive impact in the world. And so those are the those are the ladies that I love working with um, to really help take their business um, beyond what they thought was possible. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think some of the biggest challenges like your, your clients with talking with Terry, um, what are some of the biggest challenges these women entrepreneurs face? Like, yeah, fear is one of them, but like, can we narrow that down fear of what or challenge yeah. of what? You know, I think if we, we stick with fear, I think, um, I, I think even though people will still say I'm, af I'm afraid of failure. Sure. What, when I when we dig deeper, it, I really don't believe that's that's true. I feel like we have a fear of success mm -hmm. um, and pushing beyond what we thought was possible or pushing beyond what other people thought was possible for us. Yeah. Um, or the stories that like you're not good enough. And so we, and those. So, yes, the fear. But also, I think just those limiting beliefs in general that I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Who am I? I mean, all of these belief systems that's not serving us, that's, you know, and it's finding evidence. And then it becomes what happens is we become like the self fulfilling prophecy where we're only doing what we believe we can uh, or what we've been told that we can and not really pushing beyond that. Um, and so I think in, in an, an umbrella term is really that self sabotage that's mm -hmm. happening playing out for a lot of business um, women um, and men too. Um, it's right. happened with men's businesses as well. Um, but I think that that's a, a big piece of it is um, we're finding, and then we find all these excuses, right? And then, yeah. so the excuses, then, well, you know, I'm, not, I'm too busy, great excuse. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough energy, whatever it might be, all of those excuses then play into that as well. And so we have this big, like, you know, hot mask going on. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. And it's blocking us. And, you know, I've told people before, I said, you know, I, I look, when I'm working with folks, I look at where are they, where, where are they at right now? Like, what does that island A look like? You know, what's working, what's not working for them? And then what is island B? What is that island that they would love to create? And, you know, I think naturally our, our natural tendency, our natural knowingness is to get us from point or island A to island B. But what happens is somewhere along the lines, we started creating a dam and the dam has been it, you know, all this, you know, wood is being piled up. And so now I'm blocking the river, blocking the flow, if you will, mm -hmm. to get from Island A to Island B. 
And so what I do is I go in and help clear out the dam. So because, you know, how do we get this boat from this place to this place? And let's clear out what are the things that are, you know, that are blocking us. Standing in our way. So, so, so as we're trying to, you know, we, we've set a goal to clear, to clear the, the, the wood out of the way, right? Clear the path. Um, what is, what is your take on a lot of us have, uh, why are you doing that? It's blocked for a reason. Maybe that's not for you. I don't know. You know, you really got to trust that those, those roads are blocked. Are, do you really, do you really need to unblock that? Like those, those dream snatchers, right? Like you have a mission to get to Island B. Yeah. Right. Like you want to see what's over there. You want to go, you want to check it out. You can see it and you want to get there. But then those people are like, I don't know, Aaron, you're not really trained in, in clearing, clearing the path. Do you know how to drive an excavator? <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing, you know, I, I truly, truly believe that there are people in our lives for a reason, a season, mm -hmm. and a lifetime, right? And, you know, I personally have over the years eliminated, not eliminated, but, you know. Natural I, selection. I, 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 I <laughs> being so small. Sure. And by making that choice, I also had to choose who was going to be along for the ride for me. And those are the mm -hmm. people that are supportive, that are my best cheerleaders, the people that are like, yes, you can. And, you know, when they see, you know, something that comes up as some sort of an adversity that I'm facing, they're like, you know what, find a different way around it. Or, you know, or, you know, if this is, if this is truly an alignment, then this is the work that you need to do to get there. And so, um, so I, I am a big believer in, you know, crafting the support system that is going to help you succeed in getting there. Um, because that's a writer downer. You're always, you're always going to be faced with people that are not going to support you, not going to believe in your dream. And here's the thing. And it's not, I don't think that they're, they, I don't, I don't think they have bad intentions. I just don't think they have the awareness within themselves that people can go and do something beyond what they thought was possible for themselves or for someone else. Right. And so, you know, I am a big believer in creating that team that's going to support you wholeheartedly in lots of different areas and in and, and, and places. And so I have a, a huge support system, but I get some needs from some people and some from other people. And, you know, and so I have different, different people serving different needs um, all the time. And so I do think that that's really key is having those people that can, because as entrepreneurs, and you know this as well, um, there are going to be days when you, you know, hit rock bottom. There's going to be days when things throw you out, uh, things that you didn't know, you know, were hitting and they are hitting. And, you know, we're always going to have something that's going to show up and be right in our face and be like, okay, how do I deal with this? Mm -hmm. and, you know, what's the next move. And so you want to have those people that are going to be there to say, yeah, you got this. You got this. Let's move through it. Yeah. And those are the people seriously that you want to retain in your inner circle right like you those people that are cheering you on they might not agree with you but they're going to support you regardless and um there's a difference there between those people and and you and i both know it's like man you gotta you gotta have that strong team behind yeah. you because <laughs> well, i was just talking about it today um actually earlier today was you know i have some friends that are so supportive um, but I have a few friends that are, you know, like, they're like, you're crazy. Like, and I, and they do, they mean it uh, the, the, in the most genuine way, but they're like, you know what, if you, if, if anyone can do it, you can do it. And I'm like, they're like, you're just the crazy one who's going to do it. And I'm like, great. Yeah. And I feel like that's permission for me to be, okay, let's, let's, let's play bigger. Let's yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and yeah, cause you're so much like me. We've had these conversations before um, that you and I are so super similar when, when those are, Oh, you're crazy. Bring it on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Bring it on. But not everybody is like you and I, as far as that, um, that drive and that, um, Oh, and a little bit of a challenge I'm in. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. So, so for those people who are trying to overcome like um, the negative Nellies, maybe it's their own inner brain chit chatting with them that really isn't so serving for them, right? That negative self talk. Are there tips to overcome, to work around, to shut that shut that Nelly up, right? Like mine. Yeah. Mine. Her name. Her name is Rhoda. She's. She talks. I know. I know she's Southern. She's got a lot of attitude and um, right. Yeah. Like, like yeah. we all can name our people that talk to us. And um, 
you know, a lot of times if you, if you don't get control over them, they can kind of, oh, you don't need to go to that island B. Just yeah. stay here. You're yeah. just fine. Well, I, I hear it. Um, and so I definitely, I definitely um, encourage people when I'm working with people is we can, we can go back and we can clear out the past stuff that's, that's connecting and holding into. But I also look at moving forward too, is looking at let's not give any more power to those, you know, the negative analysis is not giving any more power to our own negative self-talk. And one of the things that I teach people very early out, on, out of the gate is stopping the negative chatter. Mm. Because what happens is, is there's, um, you know, many of us are familiar with the iceberg theory. And that says that, you know, 10% of the iceberg is what we see above water. And 90% of the iceberg is what we see below the water. Now, if we compare this to our brain, 10% being conscious thought, whatever thought you're thinking right this second is conscious thought. And then 90% of those um, thoughts are unconscious or subconscious. And it's kind of like the mad deck ticker, like it just never shuts off, it's constantly going. And so those unconscious and subconscious belief, beliefs or thoughts, um, you know, constitute up about 90% of them are negative. And so how do we combat this? It, there's a tool that I like to teach people that I'll, I'll teach your listeners is um, so when the brain, when we have negative thoughts that, uh, am I on camera here? Okay. Uh -huh. So when we have negative thoughts come in, right? All of those negative thoughts that we have, they're coming in. What happens is, is it starts to engage the reticulating activation system in our brain. That part of the brain scans our environment to find the evidence to support it. So the brilliance of the brain is this. Negative thoughts find negative evidence. Positive thoughts find positive evidence. It's just the way the brain works, okay? Um, and so what, when we're having negative thoughts, what I encourage people to do is, and I'll have people write this down. It goes like this. Interesting point of view that I have this interesting point of view. So I'll repeat that again. Write this down. Interesting point of view that I have this interesting point of view. Now what this does is when I have a negative thought that's coming in, right? Instead of engaging the brain and finding the evidence and spiraling out of control, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that three times. So interesting point of view that I have this interesting point of view. Interesting point of view that I have this interesting point of view. Interesting point of view that I have this interesting point of view. What that does is it cancels out that thought, okay? So it doesn't give any more power to it. Then what I tell people is that I want everyone to open themselves back up to the possibilities again. And so how we can do that, we can ask a question, what we call a generative question, like, what else is possible? Mm -hmm. So we can cancel it out and then say, what else is possible? And by the way, I love using this in traffic. <laughs> I love using this when um, anytime you have a negative thought about yourself or about someone else, anytime we have a judgment of ourselves or someone else, and anytime we have, um, we jump to conclusions or outcomes because mm. all of that, we actually shut off the energy mm. um, the possibilities. So people always ask me, how many times should I be doing this a day? And I said, well, we have 48,000 unconscious thoughts a day. So <laughs> 37,000 of them. <laughs> so, but, you know, just if we started with like 50 times a day, and I always encourage people to teach this to somebody else, you know, teach it to your spouse, your significant other, your children, your grown children, your neighbor, who, anyone who will listen, okay, basically, um, because what this will, can do is you guys can come up with a code word because most of the time we're operating from the unconscious and subconscious. So they're going to catch you saying things out loud, um, you know, beating yourself up more so than you are in the beginning. So we want to bring those unconscious, conscious, um, I'm sorry, unconscious and subconscious thoughts to the conscious world. And so if you can have someone that's going to support you and call you and say, hey, you know what, gosh, you're doing that again you know, purple elephant. Um, and then they can say, oh yeah, interesting point of view and go into the um, clearing out statement. And that's gonna open us up to lots of other possibilities. And it's, it's truly amazing to watch people transform their lives just with this little tool um, that they have now in their pocket to start canceling those, those slots out. Oh, it's so cool. You guys seriously, like Ter Terry is like piles and piles and piles of tips like that. Like that is a go for the rest of your life tip in your pocket. Yes. Yeah. Massively. And it can, like, here's me, I'm running through all the different things. Like even in today, you know, like I had to bop across the road to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. 
and just I'm like, oh gosh, she shouldn't wear that with that, right? Like I, <laughs> you know, the like you know the judgment, right? Like myself of other people, the the driving, the parking, the just the how I feel like people should be genuinely human towards each other. I'm like, but you know, I'm in a melting pot of people here. Like cultures are different. Everything's different. Everybody's thoughts of and every and I'm like, all right, Aaron, back up a little bit. <laughs> Here's your homework. I want you to play with this and do it in excess. Whenever I learn something new, I do it in excess so I can see the results. Yeah. So do it to start to see how you show up differently. And mm -hmm. I promise you, you're, because as a result, you're going to show up differently. The people and experiences that you are going to come into, um, um, in a, I guess, in, in uh, what's the word? The people that you're in coming into contact with, it's going yeah. to show up. The experiences are going to show up differently, and it's very, very powerful. Um, so do it, play with it, do it in excess, um, and it's always fun because I always have clients. I'm like, just prove me wrong, prove me wrong. Yeah, and yeah. And they come back, and they always have like this tons of evidence, and I'm like, yes, it is. It's and then the brain, ugh, I love the brain because when the brain is going to start finding the evidence, it's like, oh yes, look at this. Here's some more evidence. Here's some more evidence. And here's another tool for people because we are. Our brains love negativity. Our brains love that juiciness of it because it has such an emotional, like, ping to it, if you will. And so, when we, and I usually will ask people, I was like, you know, what's the last um, positive thing that you can remember someone telling you? Ooh. And search and search and search for it. But then I say, when was the last negative comment that someone told you? And they'll tell me the exact time and day of the, you know, like, give me the breakdown of when that actually happened. And so our brains are naturally ingrained into that kind of like that go to that threat mode, right? The fight, flight, or freeze, which is around that, that negative piece. So when you start seeing positive things show up in your life, write them down. Mm. I have a planner, or at least a, a journal, and it's my evidence um, planner. And so I will start writing down all the evidence that things are showing up in my life. And one of the reasons why I created my daily intentions planners was it keeps everything all in one. I love combining brain science and energy psychology and the law of attraction all into one like planner so that I can be very clear. I love creating every single day um, that's moving my, my business forward. And so at the bottom of that, I also have down there, what's the evidence? What's the evidence that, that's showing up? Today, for example, I um, I needed to make an I, I needed to um, call someone to rearrange an appointment for next Tuesday. I wrote it down. I said, okay, um, I need to change this um, appointment. She texted me five minutes later and says, oh my goodness, I can't have this time on Tuesday work. Can you move it to Thursday? And I was like, ha, that was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> right? And then what happens is we start to find we're in more alignment. And when we're in alignment, things fall easily and effortlessly into place. And so we don't have to effort so hard. We don't have to struggle so hard. Um, because I think that a lot of entrepreneurs get into mode and I was one of them. And that's why I can speak this from experience. Sure. Putting the square peg in the round hole. And so that struggle mode, um, when we have the tools to where we don't have to be in that struggle mode and it doesn't have to be so difficult all the time. It's like, Oh, this is refreshing. This can be easy. So. <laughs> that's so amazing. Hey, Terry, talk, I want to, I want to like move into, cause clearly you could be dropping little tips and, and tools and tidbits like all afternoon, but I want to respect your time. But I want the people to know, you know, what you're working on, how to find you, what's going on in your world right now. Yes. So I am right now, I am, you know, continuing to travel and speak. And really my, my mission in life is to really have a massive impact on people and how we're showing up and we're, how we're showing up to life, how we're showing up to business and doing it in a very different way. Um, and so I would love to um, invite people if this resonates with you, if it resonates with you, um, I would love to visit with you and, and have a moment to you know, understand what's going on for you and what you would like to create in your life. And so you can always check me out at my website at uh, talkingwithterry, T-E-R-I dot com. And for any listeners that want to come in and um, do a free download, I'm happy to give a little gift just to get you on the right path. So talkingwithterry.com. Um, backslash mindset, um, and I will get you a um, master your mindset um, guidebook, which will start getting you in the right in the right path. So, so cool. So that backslash mindset, correct? Yes. Talking yes. with Terry. Okay. 
we'll stick that on here also. Um, that's you guys seriously, like when you hang out with Terry, when you spend time in her space, clearly she's like ridiculously educated. She has multitudes of experience. She has a seven plus figure brick and mortar business. She is an amazing entrepreneur. Um, she changes your world, like just in a small amount of time. We've been on here live for 30 minutes and 19 seconds. And she's been dropping nugget after nugget after nugget. If you choose to take the positive and apply it into your world, Terry can shift and change your mind and your mindset and how you show up in your business in a matter of moments and time when you spend time with her. She seriously is brilliant. And I can't stress that enough. Yeah, it's, you are, Terry. You are, and you get you get that acknowledgement and you get that, that props because you're amazing. Um, and if you guys take the time to spend with Terry, your world will be different forever. And forever. That's only because like attract like. And so Aaron is that exact <laughs> being. So it is such an honor to be here with you and to be with your guest. Mm. Love you. Thank you. Mm. You guys, thank you so much for being with us. If you've been with us on another platform, because we're on quite a few different platforms, we appreciate you watching with us. Um, and we are live here every Tuesday and Thursday when we're not traveling and playing. So <laughs> make sure you loop right back around to us. If you want to never, ever miss another show again, just type live in the comments over here on the Aaron Strayer Show uh, feed, and we will make sure that you always always get a little heads up to when we're on live. So Terry, again, thank you so much for being live with us today. Everybody else, we'll see you right back here soon. Take care. Thank you.